What's going on guys, Ed here, bringing you another Marvel Midnight Suns video. And uh, th this one is another, it's going to be another gameplay breakdown. Uh, as with the last dev stream, we broke down uh, Joe's gameplay. And if you haven't seen that video, it's uh, it's kind of silly, but we definitely go through some pretty important things to note about that mission. Um, that one was a much higher difficulty mission, as well as the game was set on a higher difficulty uh, than this one. However, uh, as per requested, uh, I felt obliged to make this one. I didn't intend to, as it's only normal difficulty, and yet it's still pretty close to an F. So I think that there's a lot to kind of talk about here. Um, yeah, so people asked for it. I might as well do it, right? So, and it showcases some new characters, well, new characters. And so, yeah, we're going to break it down. Um, real quick, though, before that, I'd like to point out that when the game does come out on December 2nd, I will be streaming everything. Uh, all my gameplay, and you can catch that at twitch.tv slash zsc6 with an underscore in between. Links for that will be down below. Also, um, this anthology will have sort of all my data, all my information. I am going to sort of redo it. I'm going to tweak it a little bit uh, before launch, so it's a bit easier to access and navigate. But basically, it's like if you want all the stuff I talk about with characters and comps and and what I consider important videos, uh, that'll all be linked to the side, and then my updated tier list, which you'll also see on this. Uh, th this is just my sort of resource hub for Midnight Sun. So if you're interested in a lot of the stuff I talk about, the documentation that I use, you'll find most of it here, okay? So I just wanted to mention that uh, before we get going. But as with the last one, let's talk about the... Whoa. No, let's talk about uh, the deck first. So the the deck that Garth went with, well, you have Hunter, Scarlet, and Magic. Now, the reason why Magic has a question mark there, we don't have a full breakdown, is because Magic dies really, really early, and we never get to see anything else that she brought. Um, so I'm just quickly going to touch on Hunter and Scarlet Witch. So the Scarlet Witch ones... Uh, hex field charge unleashed and bolt uh, that's a lot of like chain and aoe related stuff hunter has a ton of healing pretty much anything that says holy so holy spark holy flame holy burst heal uh, those all have healing coefficients related to them um, quick slash is a cc option spire makes a card uh, card heroism cost zero and uh, bands of fire is another cc option so Hunter has some CC and healing, Scarlet Witch has some damage, uh, and Magic was supposed to do magic things, right? Group them up, knock them down, but that doesn't really happen. And then the two combat items he brought in are Healing Salve and Focus Lens. Uh, healing Salve would have come in handy at one point, which if I can remember to mention it or where, I'll mention it. But he, like I said, he does end up succeeding, so it doesn't matter at the end of the day. And Focusing Lens definitely would have been useful on a higher difficulty, and you'll kind of see why that is. Um, yeah, so this is the deck. We'll, we'll point it out as we go. Overall, regardless of what Magic has, I actually don't like this deck or this comp at all. I think, number one, it lacks a tank, which is important for this mission. And number two, I actually think a lot of the damaging options are quite insignificant or quite weak. Uh, and you'll see, in my opinion... A lot of the turns, it's like, I guess I'll play this, I guess I'll play that, and it's because you like nothing else really felt good. I think a lot of these options just kind of suck, uh, honestly. So, anywho, let's sort of, uh, let's get into it here. Um, let me just make sure that we're good. You can see everything. Yes. So here, Excellent. All right, so let's break down what we're looking at first. Here we go. So on this mission, there is only one objective, and that is to defeat the Nest Mother. Uh, the Nest Mother is over to the left behind the Guardian. <clears throat> we'll talk more about her uh, in a little bit. The You, you can see a couple doggos um, sort of on the left and the right, and then there's these little structures in the middle, these purple things. Those are pretty key to this mission. And then you have two Revenants in the back. Uh, that's also another new enemy where... They have quite a bit of healing, and they have the ability to sort of revive their allies, as well as apply bleeding to you. So looking at this, 
and the only objective is to defeat nest mother you might think okay so let's just all in on nest mother well the problem with doing that is number one she's protected right now by guardian and protected means that she can't take damage from aoe abilities and she also can't be direct targeted but that's okay because she does actually take damage when you destroy these little purple structures in the middle of the screen so you can kind of play it that way uh, so play number one would be to just all in the what's her name nest mother and rip through the guardian number two it says play one play two could be to just destroy these little purple structures and then play three would be my suggestion and you do a little bit of both uh, i think this entirely depends on what composition you're running as it's going to depend right if you have a lot of aoe or chain you might want to you know do the purple structures whereas if you have a lot of burst damage or someone like you know uh blade or or captain marvel or uh even ghost rider right high single target damage you may want to just focus nest mother worth mentioning though that the revenants do target whoever was most recently bleeding which is a huge focal point of this mission that does not really ever get used um so yeah this is just sort of the breakdown of of the screen same as last time but unlike last time we're not going to repeat the opener over and over and over again but just to repeat if you had to repeat redo this mission you would redraw the same hand right so keep that in mind he'd be drawing uh slash field spark portal inspire combo every time so we can always go off of the assumption that you know there's more than one way to do things there was multiple courses of action he could have taken and for the record I also don't recall everything, every decision that he made. And so we're going to see what, what I would do. We're going to watch what Garth does. And then I'm going to comment on on kind of what was good or bad and then what I would do next. Whereas with the other video with Joe, I sort of skipped some turns and skipped some things. But that's because he redid the same content, right? But this one, because it's a full fight, we might as well just break it down turn by turn. And I think that's just going to be the best way to sort of kind of get through the content. Also, if I clear my throat a lot, sorry, I'm a little under the weather. So, here so. we are on our third mission. We have our light hunter that we just decked out. Um, looking so, looking ready pretty much off the rip, I would basically. Like, my approach to this with this. So, the issue I have with the team composition, number one, is no tank, right? I said that on the deck breakdown. But the other issue I have is all his damage sources that we see are just kind of like meh. Uh, they're not great. The, the hunter cards that both heal and deal damage, you'll notice that their coefficients are a little bit lower because, well, they do both, right? Or there's the problem of a lack of CC or a lack of status effects, which is ironic considering you have Scarlet Witch on your team who is a debuffer, right? But that never, her passive never actually gets uh, like utilized in this fight, which I find very odd. But looking at this, right, you have Limbo Portal, which is a free play, Inspire Plus, which is a free play, um, Holy Spark, which either cures or does damage, there's nothing to cure, uh, Hexfield is a bit of a weird one, and then Quick Slash, which is a form of CC, and then of course you have Hero Combo for a big uh, beefy chunk of damage. So Inspire into Hero Combo makes a lot of sense if you wanted to hit the Protector first. Dang. I don't actually remember what he does. So this is check it out just skip ahead a few clicks here okay so yeah quick slash knock back quick um this would be good if you can get an instant ko right because then it refunds the card play this is a really efficient efficient card uh, i agree with this i think this is a good call but recall your redraws right so do we let me just go back a second are there any cards in the hand that you feel and again looking at the board again think about what you would do first right you know pause the video think about what you would do how you would approach this and if you don't know what some of the enemies do i'm going to cover them as we sort of go through them but i do cover the dogs a lot in the last breakdown so just to quickly rehash those the dogs when taunted all the dogs will be taunted to the character that taunted the first dog right so for example if you had captain america and you taunted one doggo he would automatically taunt all doggos that's really key uh, because in this mission 
there is a big problem with no taunt and you will see that happen it's the reason magic dies and so the ability to split up the taunt or the aggro excuse me with taunt would be huge uh, so the, yeah the dogs you can kind of manipulate with with taunt uh that that way okay um so yeah quick slash is a good play here inspire hero combo is a good play here um you don't want to use Limbo Portal because you don't have any other magic card, so that doesn't really work. <laughs> Destroying those little monuments is pretty big, right? So watch this, right? KO the dog, or hit the dog rather, and KO the little urn thing, and Nest Mother just took damage there. So she took damage because even though she's protected and the Guardian is protecting, it, the keywords are immune to like area of effect abilities and you can't directly damage them so you can destroy all these monuments and just do a ton of damage that way which is how i would approach this personally because uh, you can already see right on the screen right um there's one two three four on the screen still and he just destroyed one that's five this one did 36 damage i don't know if that's a, like a, a consistent number or or what but either way let's just say it's 36 that's what you know, 170 damage, give or take. Like, that's a lot of damage for free. Right. And those little monuments, too, they do buff the enemies. So you do want to destroy them anyway. So. So you could inspire hero combo. I might redraw. I'd actually use a redraw on Holy Spark here. Holy Spark is a kind of a dead card right now. Um, yeah. And the reason being, again, there's nothing to cure this turn, so. So you could use it on the Guardian, uh, and this would make sense, right? You rip through all the block, you take off the protecting, and you do damage but i actually don't think the guardian is a super big priority here at least this turn right now because again you have all those other nodes to attack that you could um do damage with to the nest mother because again the wind condition is destroyed nest mother you don't have to kill everything else so i don't know if hero comboing the guardian is necessarily correct uh, i don't know if it's worth it i would rather use all that damage and sink it into nest mother and destroy the guardian's block a different way because the guardian he like you're going through the block and you're losing up a lot of his health bar but i don't think he needs to be killed right away so yeah that's just me though so again when we mouse over the revenant i'll kind of talk about it even though jake's going to um There we go. So the revenants, right? So passive blood hunger always target the last unit to gain bleed, you know, and that works for allies and enemies. So bringing the the what is it? The nano nano nanite blade, I think it was called, uh, that makes your next attack apply bleed. That's huge. You could use that on the on the nest mother. That would be a good combat item. Or you could just bring blade in general and have the revenants always be targeting the nest mother. I think is a great play uh, so that that never gets used in this fight but that's a key aspect that could have been utilized and then soulbound is any soulbound unit if any soulbound unit has health at the end of the turn automatically res and equally distribute health between all soulbound units so that's um it's it's kind of like the dark legion if you saw the last video i did where the dark legion will split itself and so even though the Dark Legion didn't heal, it sort of multiplied its health pool. You can think of this as in a similar way. So the idea is you either want to kill all the Soulbound units in one turn or none of them, at least in a perfect world. Um, but it, again, it doesn't really pay off here in this mission, so it's hard to really comment on it. But that's just think of it like the Dark Legion. And they also do you have healing options as well? They're actually, yeah, they're very much like Dark Legion, actually. Like, the more that I'm talking about it, they're very much Dark Legion 2.0 um, with, the, with the ability that you can manipulate who they target, so. 
not not a super big threat, uh, especially in this mission, because they are soulbound to each other. So you might as well just uh, ignore them. Let's just skip this here. There we go. See, he does use hero combo on the guardian. Okay, yeah, so here you go. Holy Spark, damage an enemy or cure quick. So being quick, you know, it would have been good to kind of open with, but it, if you're going to keep it. But like I suggested, I would have honestly redrawn it. I think it's important to use your redraws earlier, like first in the turn, to give yourself the new options rather than the at the end, right? Because there's no... In many situations, there's no RNG in this game, so you know what's going to happen. So you already know, okay, do I need this? Do I need that? So he's using Gather, which is a two heroism cost card. And, like, how I want you to think about this Gather is you've just spent two heroism, your only two heroism, to gain what, right? The issue is that. So you've used Gather on the Guardian, the Nest Mother, and I think it was a Doggo, which is fine. However, when you damage the Nest Mother with direct damage, every Lillen targets you. That's that's their, that's her gimmick. That's what makes her so difficult to deal with. Now you can manipulate this by having like your tank swing at the end, or uh, having your tank swing and then leading somebody so that you at least don't get hit by the Revenants, right? or have somebody hit her and then the tank uh, taunt one of the doggos, right? This is what I meant by splitting up the aggro. And I think that that's huge. Or you could bring a combat item where you can use it and select an enemy to be taunted to that and that ally, that's a thing. So you could pick, you know, with this comp, you could say, I'm gonna use the combat item on the hunter to taunt the doggo. Oh. I just taunted all the doggos, right? So these are things you can use to sort of manipulate the aggro. Rather than what Garth did, which was unnecessarily swing at the nest mother and taunt everybody. And this is how magic died in two turns, by the way. Spoilers. So last redraw or last card play is Hexfield. Um which is fine. Doesn't really not super impactful here though. I wouldn't even bother really attacking the doggos, to be quite frank. But I'll just skip ahead here. There we go. So overall, we're kind of running into some aggro issues, right? We're running into the problem of we don't have bleed to take advantage of the revenants. We don't have taunts to manipulate the doggos. We don't have more indirect damage sources. Uh, yeah, like, like these things, these are like so the comp and the deck are just functionally garbage in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess the comp is okay with like Magic and Wanda have good synergy, but the Hunter, the way he's built her, not necessary. Um, I would have built the Hunter more as like a tank slash bruiser. Magic you had to keep alive in order to use Gather, but. Oh right, and the revenants also apply bleed as well. Like we all know about potions, don't leave them until the end of the game. You know, uh -huh. right? It's we all end up with too many potions. They're there to use them. And she is corrupted now. So even if she didn't die this turn, she died next turn from corrupted explosion. Okay, there's another monument. Monument of Mending heals them. Go figure. I know, that's crazy, right? Boom. Okay, and there's the Guardian running back in his position.
So let's go back a second here. So we have a few dogs alive. We have two revenants alive. We like, and no one's really effectively dead that matters yet. Now, looking at this hand, you can already see a problem, right? We have one, two, three, five things that cost heroism. We have zero heroism. We have holy flame and unleashed. Holy flame is okay. Unleashed is not going to help you here because you don't have the means to actually cast an AOE. I think hex charge just sucks. By the way, uh, let me see if they mouse over it. Oh, I missed it. Surely they mouse over it again. There. So it reads, target an enemy to explode at the start of their next turn for 58 damage. If KO'd, they explode for 58 damage. So th this is a theoretical 116 damage play. But for three heroism, for uncertainty as to where the enemy will be the next turn, because the only way to like consistently set this up would be to stun her, stun the enemy and stun whoever you wanted them to hit, All right? So hex charge is super unreliable. It takes multiple turns to do all its damage. It's three heroism cost, and yeah, I just I don't know. I think the card actually kind of blows. Uh, I don't know what the upgrade is, but the upgrade better be good because so <laughs> I think that card sucks. So right away, right, we need to redraw. So we need to redraw. I would say let's get magic up now rather than later. And then kind of go from there. You can't treat them all at level for the same thing. So we want to make sure that at any point if we say, hey, there's this. I would redraw the hex charges, at least one of them, and then go from there. And all throughout the game, um, she'll be fine and still a viable character. But, um, uh, but there will be a power. So the thing is, the Ivory Collar just activated, and this is kind of where we have a problem, right? So the Ivory Collar, you get it from playing three Hunter cards, and the Ivory Collar makes it so your next attack card is is free. Or, yeah, I think that's it. The issue is you've used your last Hunter attack card to proc the Ivory Collar, meaning you can't use it that turn. In other words, use your redraws. Uh, use them earlier rather than later, and you avoid this situation. Oh no, even worse. The next attack card played is not discarded. So that means you can play it, and then play it again, or play it, then play it next turn. Sorry. Uh, ivory color is free, not the card is free. Never mind. So you can play the same thing twice, basically. So he has to redraw something. I would dump Ivory Collar and Hex Charge, or just both Hex Charges, because I think that card sucks. But uh, that's me. So he draw Bands of Fire, knock back in any direction. This is not particularly useful. And it does use his own heroism, or his only heroism, rather. But there's a key here. And the key being that you do destroy the Guardian. So, there is that, I guess. There's only two things taunted there, so doing the direct damage wasn't that big of an issue. So, that's fine. Hexbolt, definitely play Hexbolt. And here you'd want to swing at one of the monuments, preferably the little one if it gets the kill. Oh yeah, so the Focusing Lens combat item, I forgot to mention that in a breakdown. It would have been useful to use in this fight, because you could have had an, another unit taunt like the dogs, right? Selected a hero to taunt an enemy, that's the one I was talking about, uh, Focusing Lens. Pretty useful in this mission, but never uses it. So here, I would Hexbolt a monument if it gets the kill, like on that little guy right in the middle or to the right of Wanda. You could play Unleashed, I guess, if you had more AoEs in the deck, but he doesn't. So Unleashed is actually, like, almost a dead card here. Almost. 
sweating a little bit here, guys. Have the revenant linked up? I have, I'm sorry, I didn't notice if they sold anything. They have not. Let's just skip ahead here. Okay, so the hunter's getting abused. Magic is still down. That's gonna be. Um, I think it is much easier to pass. Okay. So we've just drawn three Wanda cards, uh, which is bad because now Ivory Color is still relatively useless. It's worth mentioning that he does have three or only three Hunter attack cards in the deck. If you're taking Ivory Color. You should be bringing at least four attack cards. Again, if if you've seen, if you know the math, you've seen my deck building video. If you were to bring four of something, the odds of always just having one on hand is so high that Ivory Color almost requires four attack cards in order to be always useful, rather than an empty card in your hand, right? Because the goal would be you'd want to play, play a card, get Ivory Color, play Ivory Color. Play a good attack card to charge another ivory color and then like keep the keep the cycle going rather than sitting on a collar. So he only had three attack cards, two skill cards, and three heroic cards. That was the hunter deck. I would definitely just go more like four two two or four three one, depending on your setup. But yeah, that's just worth mentioning. So hex bolt should be played anytime you draw it, so that should be played this turn. Hexfield is okay if you wanted to use it on multiple monuments. Like you could hexfield those two monuments in the middle of the screen there. I think that's a reasonable play. I think using Unleashed and then Resing Magic would be what I do here. I would go um, maybe Unleashed, Res, Hexfield. That's a pretty good turn. Or Unleashed, Hexbolt, uh, Res. Oh, but I would use my redraws first, right? So I would be redrawing Unleashed. And honestly, at this point, I would just redraw Ivory Color. I think it really is going to require playing past um, a single game. I think that there is a new game plus mode. Which so really let's possible. see what he does, because I forget. We'll, we'll hold off on talking about yep, that, so redrawing Unleashed, that's good. Holy Flame, so nice. So Holy yeah. Flame and Ivory, that's good so synergy there. Next field, okay. If it's possible, someone will do it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, what is this? Your result is the shoving the nest mother. Oh, shove. I'm yeah, that's right. I'm, I am rushing the nest mother because I am in a little bit of trouble here. So. Okay. You've got unleashed, although you don't really have a lot of card plays. Unleashed is going to give you two heroism. And then your hex field is going to be a little more effective. You've got patience, which is one of my favorite hunter patience. abilities. But patience that would, take, would take her out. Chat um, is telling us to invoke the power of, of Stan Lee. Um, I think Stan is okay. behind me in my... In my yeah, Ivory Collar, so, uh, Flame. Here. This is reasonable, I guess, but you're doing more direct damage without actually getting the kill here. So, Because if you, you have to consider that, like, you would, you would want to do indirect damage to the nest mother until you can get the kill, right? Then you'd be fine. On the flip side, if you directly damage her with your tank as your final swing, I think that that's a smart play, but he doesn't have a tank, so... Obviously, Hunter is at risk of dying here. I would res just to try to spread the taunt for the aggro, excuse me, and then it's still, you could still play Holy Flame, especially since Ivory Color is live right now. Have you been playing your Hex Bolt? I'd like to point out Wanda's Hex Bolt ability. Oh. Yes, I thought it was in class. Have you been using Hex Bolt? Uh, no, but, but that, yes, every, I used it once. So every time you yeah. use it, then for the rest of the mission, Wanda's Hex Bolt mm -hmm. has an additional chain, so they get incredibly powerful. If you invest... All right. I mean, magic. Going down, then. Come on now. Do something. Thank you to IGN okay. For, for so he holy bursts, which does damage and heals and an AOE. Also, um, this is in order to heal the hunter. The this is okay. Uh, yeah, the issue is the Monument of Shadows. And then playing heal here, I don't. I don't think this is correct at all. Because like, even though it heals the hunter. I don't know. Like it would have been better off playing something else instead of. Yeah, I don't. I don't like this turn at all. 
in general. Some heroes have abilities that can change that number, so potentially four. And you know... Okay, there's the res. Because, you see... Oh, okay, let me explain why I don't like what happened, okay? <laughs> because we know that your intention was to... We know that the intention was to res magic, right? So, if you look at this and you look at damage each enemy and restore 124 health to each ally in an area, well, you could have tried to heal your other allies, right? So that's an issue number one, because all of the units on the team are kind of low. Issue number two... Is using a heal, it's strictly a selfish play. It's actually why I don't, um, like it's selfish in that you, you only heal one target, right? So you can choose to either uh, play it on the hunter, right? Or, or magic would be another pretty valid option. Da, da, da. So he has no plays. Alright, so the hunter got stunned. This was from the nest mother. And then uh, now, being incapacitated, he actually didn't draw any magic cards, which I find hilarious. He only has access to Hexbolt, but this is fine because Hexbolt, Hexbolt could actually be pretty good here. It would honestly win you the ra like the mission. Um, you don't even have to worry about Hunter being played here. So I would go literally for game Hexfield, Hexbolt, Hexbolt, and you just have all you have to do is destroy the two monuments that are on the or the four monuments on the screen and the Nest Mother just dies. Like there's no risk. There's no there's no risk uh, because again, like the math of of assuming it is 36 each, you could use hex bolt chains on the two little guys. Uh, use hex field on the big guy, or start with hex field on the big guy. Sorry, hex bolt the two little guys and then hex bolt the, the last big guy, and you win the mission. So like that's that's how you win this turn. Uh, no contest. Can't remember what he does here though. I know that he makes her go concealed again. <laughs> and that's why, for the record, using double hex bolt on her wasn't really correct. Was like, she does go concealed, so like, what if, theoretically, you didn't have another way to hit her, right? Like, just theoretically speaking, I feel like this was incorrect. Obviously, again, it doesn't matter in the end, but I think it was pretty suboptimal. Boom. And that's the win, right? So, overall, it's fine. It was okay, but, like, you could kind of tell, right? Like, a lot of the Hunter plays were just kind of meh. A lot of the the Scarlet Witch plays were kind of meh. Um, I think the decks were just bad. I think that Magic being dead for so long was just bad. Um, the lack of taunt manipulation was massive, so you needed either a bleed, you needed a tank, you needed... Um, uh, what was it? You needed to use the focusing lens, right? All these things that were just not used, and you know there was still a possibility to fail, and this was only normal difficulty. So I don't know, man. I I I've said many many times that you need a balanced team composition, and I feel like even on normal difficulty, that is still showing to be kind of true. Kind of true. Um, I'll just let this play out, but it, yeah, it's rough. It, it's rough. So yeah, not you know not as much to to discuss as the last one, but you know hopefully that gives you some insight, gives you my two cents on the matter. Uh, again, links to my anthology, my I'll put my deck video, deck building video there too, I guess. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought, and I will see you. In the next one or on december 2nd whichever comes first and uh, yeah have a good one